friends, it is Miss Katie here, and I have another Bible lesson for you today. Um, this morning, I am recording our lessons ahead of time, and there will be a few Sundays where I do that, just because there will be uh, times where I'm not uh, teaching uh, with the kids in the classroom, uh, but there are other teachers who will be, and I wanted to be sure that you are still able to learn and grow in what it is that God wants us to learn, uh, so you can learn right alongside with us still. So, before we get started, let's go ahead and pray. Dear Lord, we just thank you so much for this day and the time that we have. I thank you for the opportunity that we have to continue to learn and grow in your word, and that our friends at home are still able to continue learning and growing with us, Lord. And I just thank you for... Um, the day that you give us and the uh, ability that you have that we can learn and grow together. In your son's name I pray. Amen. Now our story today comes from Joshua chapter 2. So let me go ahead and hold this on up. And has anybody been able to spot the two yet? Yep, it's right here. Good job. So we're in Joshua chapter 2, and our story comes from the Bible, and we know that if our story is from the Bible, that it is a true story, and that we know it really happened. It's not a pretend story. Uh, and that um, some of these things have happened a long time ago. Uh, and some of these things in God's word haven't happened yet, but will happen. So uh, let's find out what's going on in Joshua chapter 2. But before we do that, I have a question for you. Do you like to pretend or do you like to play dress up? And who do you like to dress up as or pretend who you are? A princess or a knight? Oh, that's nice. A ninja? That would be a fun one. Oh, a police officer or firefighter? Those are cool guys. Yep, the army people are nice to dress up as too. Oh, I don't know about those scary guys. They, they. I like to be um, dressing up more as uh, uh, the nicer things and not so much as the scary things. But uh, sometimes those can be fun too. So sometimes when we pretend, uh, we might dress up, but other times when we pretend, we can just use our imagination. So today, I'm gonna pretend to be a woman named Rahab from the Bible. And this, um, you can find this story again in Joshua chapter two. So I will tell you a story of God's faithfulness and how one woman put her faith in the one true God. <clears throat> I'm so glad you came here to hear my true story today. My name is Rahab. I lived in a great and mighty city of Jericho. It was a large and wealthy city, and our city had the thickest, tallest, strongest walls you have ever seen. In fact, we had two walls. an outer wall and an inner wall. The walls were so strong that my home built was built between the walls. From my window, I could look straight down the wall. It was high. Not even the greatest armies could get through our walls. At least, that's what we thought. One day, we heard a news that scared us. The Israelites had camped outside our walls across the river. What do you know about the Israelites? Yeah, they're the nation of Israel that came from Egypt and had been wandering in the wilderness for 40 years. God's chosen people. So the people of Jericho did not know anything about the one true God until we heard about the nation of Israel. We worshiped idols and news traveled quickly throughout Jericho that an enemy was nearby. Did you hear? The God of the Israelites piled up the water 
of the Red Sea and led people through on dry ground. Not only that, their ground, their God drowned the Egyptian army in the Red Sea. Their God fights for them. He has given them victory over great kings. Now, all this time I thought, who is this God? Who does such wondrous acts? Who is this God who fights for his people and defeats kings and armies? Who is this God who leads his people with a pillar and a cloud, with a pillar of cloud and fire? I want to know this God. Hurry, hurry. One morning, or one evening, I'm sorry, I heard pounding on my door. I rushed to the door. who was there and there stood two men and immediately I knew these two men were from Jericho they were Israelites oh the two men were not from Jericho they were Israelites they worshiped the great God who did fearful and wonderful miracles I knew they had to be spies how did they get through the gates? I was afraid and nervous. What could they want from me? Quick, we are men of Israel. We need a place to hide, they pleaded. So I let them in. Shh. We don't want any of the king's guards or soldiers to hear us. I led them up to my rooftop. Here, hide it under this flax, I said. And Flax, for those of you who don't know, is something on the roof that we covered on our roof. So it's kind of like shingles on a house now, but a little bit different uh, where it's not necessarily stuck in place. So the men were able to hide in the flax and flax is the thin long plant that is used to make rope. But before I left the men hiding, I spoke to them. Our city is greatly afraid of your God. We know the Israelites will attack Jericho. We are afraid of what your mighty God will do. But I believe in your God, the God of Israel, the one true God. Since I have been kind to you, I want you to do something for me. And it is recorded in the Bible in Joshua 2, 3, 13. I'm going to back up to verse number 12. Now, therefore, I beg you, swear to me by the Lord, since I have shown you kindness, that you will also show kindness to my father's house and give me a true token and spare my father and my mother, my brothers, my sisters, and all that they have and deliver our lives from death. So I asked the Israelites, since I showed them kindness, to spare my life and my family's life when they attacked Jericho. And the spies agreed, we promise not to hurt you or any members of your family if you promise to keep us hidden. So just then, There is another loud pounding at my door. Soldiers! I was afraid, but I went to my door and I told the king's men that the spies had been there, but they had left. I said if they hurried, they might catch them. The king's men never did find the spies that night. I took the spies to my window in the wall and the city gates were bolted shut and there were guards everywhere. I attached a long red cord and let the spies down to the ground outside the wall. As they left, I said, please remember your promise. And the spies repeated their promise to me. Tie this red cord in your window and leave it there. Gather all your family into your home. When Israel attacks Jericho, we promise not to harm you or your family. 
and down, down, down the red cord, the spies carefully lowered themselves. They ran away into the hills, and that night, I renewed my trust in the one true God. I believed that he alone is God in heaven and earth. He alone is the true God, and he alone is worthy of my trust. I tied that cord in my window, just as the spies had said, to show that I believed God could rescue me from the coming attack. God and the nation of Israel did keep their promise. On that day, Israel did attack Jericho, and my family and I were spared in an incredible way. You'll learn the rest of my story in a few more weeks, but today, I want you to know that God is the true God and worthy of our trust. All right, boys and girls, let's find out what's going on with our friends, Michael and Emily. Michael and Emily loved summer. Summer meant going barefoot and picnics and swimming. Emily loved the water. She could stay in the pool all day long. Mommy called her little fish. Emily especially loved swimming lessons. Michael liked the water and playing in the pool with his friends, but he did not like swimming lessons. And most of all, Michael disliked the diving board. It was too high and the water was too deep. Even though the other boys liked to jump off the diving board, Michael didn't. Emily had just learned how to do a backstroke with her swim class. That meant swimming backwards and she loved it. When she got out of the pool, she saw Michael's class walking to the diving board. Uh-oh, Emily muttered to herself. She looked over at Mommy who was sitting in a lounge chair. Mommy and Emily both looked worried. Oh dear, will Michael jump? They both thought. The boys in Michael's class lined up by the ladder steps. Michael watched his teacher demonstrate and listen carefully. Curl your toes around the end of the board. Place your hands above your head, bend the knees, tuck and jump, he said. Splash, the instructor jumped in. He made it look easy. Michael moved closer and closer to the ladder as the line of boys climbed the steps and each one took his turn to dive. He watched each boy curl his toes, raise his hands, bend his knees, and jump off the end of the board. The instructor waited in the pool by the diving board to make sure each boy swam safely to the edge of the pool. He had a float in case somebody needed help. Next, it would be Michael's turn. I can't, I can't, he thought. Then a word popped right into Michael's mind. Faith! Michael had learned about faith. Faith isn't just hoping. Faith is believing God can help you do something. Rahab had faith. She believed God was the one true God. She was willing to risk her life to hide the spies. She believed Israel's God was trustworthy and she took dangerous action. Michael looked at the instructor in the water. Michael knew it would be perfectly safe to dive off that board. He knew God was with him and helping him, and Michael decided to put his faith into action. Michael, it's your turn, the instructor called from the water. Michael took a deep breath. He climbed up the ladder and walked to the end of the board. The board seemed high. The instructor seemed far away. He knew Mommy and Emily were watching. He was sure Mommy was praying for him. Faith, faith, I have faith, he whispered. Curl toes, arms up, tuck knees, jump! Michael jumped off the board and he hit the water with a splash. The instructor was right there to help him to the edge of the pool. Emily cheered, way to go, Michael! And Mommy cheered, great job, Michael, perfect! The instructor gave Michael a high five as he climbed out of the pool. That was the best, he said. And Michael had smiled from ear to ear. He did it. Michael believed God helps and protects him. And that is why he could do a hard thing, even though he was afraid. All right, boys and girls, few questions for you. So what did 
Michael, or what were Michael and Emily doing? That's right, they were taking swimming lessons. And why was Michael afraid? Yeah, he didn't want to jump off the diving board. That was something that was scary for him. And what did he remember? There was a word he remembered. Do you remember what that word was? That's right, faith. Faith is putting what you believe into action. So it's believing that God can help you do a hard thing. And that is faith. Believing that God is able to help you do the hard things. So um, we can remember faith as our actions and the things that we do for what we say we believe. Now, let's go ahead and go over our memory verse before we end for today. All right, I'm going to turn this just a little bit. And hopefully we can get rid of some of this glare. Okay. We are in Joshua, and it's Joshua 2.11. So... For the Lord, your God, he is God in heaven, above, and on earth, beneath. Joshua 2.11. Let's say that one more time. Joshua 2.11. For the Lord, your God. He is in heaven, above and on earth, beneath. Joshua 2.11. So what that verse is telling us is that the Lord our God, he is in charge of everything. He is God over everything, above the earth, in the earth, and um everything in the earth so everything that surrounds the earth too so he's in heaven but he is still the god of where we are and we can thank him for that all right boys and girls i will see you next week goodbye